All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Half fast 719. Cleaned up the tools a little bit. Milwaukee drawers looking a little more Milwaukee and less, a lot less DeWalt. Excuse me. I'm starting to sprinkle outside. Pretty crazy. It's nice. We need the moisture. I need the moisture because I can't talk because it's so dry out here. My uh, throat's all janked up. <clears throat> yeah, man. So I guess we'll start off with setting a tripod up if I can figure out how to do that. And uh, I'll go ahead and take the wheel off. Taking the wheels off, and uh, yeah, try out my brother's three eighths. Let's try out the three eighths drive Milwaukee. I'm actually gonna I'm just keep using the same battery that I've been using forever. Grab me an adapter. Oh, that's nice. Mil Schwaki. I don't have to worry about the stupid detent pen, even though I'm still looking for the stupid detent. And I'm in the light, but whatever. Three eighths is a little bit of power. A little more power. They weren't that tight, I don't think, to begin with. Oh. I gotta put air in this tire. So, that's a mess up there. I don't know where my broom is. So like I said, I'm first going to start with the ball joints, I'll take everything apart, just take that knuckle off, which I think everything should be pretty much hand tight, so use my Ulsa tool ratchet adjustable wrench. worn out but whatever is what it are or what it is This is just a brake rotor box. I'm just gonna put it down in here. Put everything there. Let's see if this wrench will go that far. It does. Let's see if I can't. Oh, I gotta take the caliper off. I'm just gonna show you guys do the one side. You guys don't need to see all this junk. So, whenever you order a brake pad kit, all I can suggest is make sure it comes with a, a hardware kit, or make sure you get the hardware kit included. Because, uh, I don't know, I think it's just better, easier on everybody. So, yeah, they're, pretty, they're, they're the right pads. Mm. And 
here on the tight. So let me get something to hang it. Nothing too crazy. I have, to, I have to get that out. Let's see. Upper one's off. that this is just new was the only reason why I did it bolts in there just so the truck wouldn't break fold over or whatever it could have done just in case the kid or the wife had to move it for some reason they could push it out Like I always say, make sure you guys the washer for that. Okay. Um just make sure you guys just because you think they got grease in them or they come with grease, make sure you guys put grease in them. So I'm putting the bolts in facing down because the axle rides in here. So I don't know if you can see or not what I'm even doing. Um, but yeah, I'm putting the, the bolts, the threaded part down, the heads on top, because the axle goes in here. Take them, take the nuts, put them on. I'm just gonna run them with an impact. A wrench with an impact, zipper down. is perfect. Oh, it's so nice not having to push a detent pin. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. My brother. Hopefully from the same other. Anyway, right, just gonna zip them in.
All green's a little, a little worn out, but I don't care. All right, so we have the upper one in already. Oh. The lower one is installed now. So as you know, I need to cut this. I don't know. Let me see. Oh boy. Let's back it up. So let's go in here. So as you can see the top of the shock. So I gotta cut this out and then uh, build a, a hoop up here. So I'm gonna take the shock out. All I have is just a bolt in there. And uh, Let's use that electric ratchet that my brother gave me. Yeah. Because brothers are sometimes cool. 14, which means it's probably 9 sixteenths. The other one would have zipped that off. So push this down. Compress the shock. Save this. Shook for ladder. I like this one a little scratch it a little better because. ratchet because it's this ratchet it's gonna it actually is a little bit bumped out instead of the other one where it's recessed in there so your shock out so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut that and then Probably cut them both, take the other side apart, change the ball joints on the other side, cut them both out, and then, uh, yeah, next video will be uh, the brakes. But let me do all this, let me finish it, and then show you guys what I've done. I'll be back. All right, people. Oh, I had a little nightmare. So what I ended up doing is I cut this piece, the little bump stop that was right there. I cut that off so I can get that much more travel. I cut this. That was there. Cut that off. Um, I took a piece of that, uh, I think it's 2 by 4 square tubing. And I cut it at two inches, and then I cut it at two inches, cut it in half and half. So, and then what I did was <clears throat> welded it in here, dropped it down about uh, about three eighths of an inch, welded it in there, stuck the shock in there, and it wouldn't fit. So, what I had to do is I took a big crescent wrench, and I flared that side and flared this side so now it fits in there nice and loose obviously I had to drill a new hole through the top of that got the axle in axles in I did use uh, some Loctite on the bolts so high strength Loctite um, I wasn't going to do the welding, I wasn't going to do this shock stuff, but it's actually pretty cool outside. It's not too hot. It's just kind of humid. Because it was about to rain, um, I did have to take the tone ring off of this, off of these axles, or 
just the one. You can see that one still has the tone ring on it. So you just go around it with a punch here, or the other side, you know, four, four whatever sides. So, uh, yeah, cut it, cut all that back, um, painted it, sanded it down, scuffed it up, cleaned it, painted it, and uh, now I'm just going to, just back to assembly, so I'm going to try to lift it up by hand, put the knuckle in, put the axle in, lift it in to this one. I did loosen the lower control arm bolts. Um, because, uh, I'm going to have a new ride height. This way it doesn't tear the, tear the bushings. So when I set it down and set it at its ride height, I'll get under there. I'll tighten it. Um, something you always want to do when you're lowering a vehicle or replacing control arms. Set it down to its ride height, roll it back and forth so everything settles, and then tighten the control arm bolts. Anyway, let me uh, let me get to it. Let me go ahead and slap this junk on. I don't know if you can see or not. I don't really care. I do, but I don't care. Cause I'm in it too deep already. So have the axle front, this nut, and. like that. Pretty much everything's in. The axle nut on. This lower ball joint tight. Make sure your boots on your ball joint. I don't want these crazy tight. So I'm just gonna use my little also tools to find the hole for the cotter catter pin which is pretty much right there same thing for this upper one sorry guys I'm out of breath if you guys can even See what I'm doing or not, but I'm tightening this.
how does it get that? Ooh, it's nice and new. Stick this goes on the bottom. Anyway, you guys get the gist, the digest of it. So I don't, I'm not sure if this ball joint's the right one because it seems like that cutter pin's gonna be. I'll show you real quick. Seems like that cutter pin hole can be a tad eye, but whatever it is what it is. So, like I said, axles in, axles tightened over there. Then I'll bring the shook down. And I have to find uh, some bolts for it. But in the meantime, I'll just use the bolt that I had. Then I'll tighten everything up. Uh, I still have to do the sway bar in link. But I got, I'm gonna go over there and do all this crap to it to the other side. And uh, gotta do the ball joints on the other side. Then uh, maybe tomorrow or later I will put the brakes on. So basically, the next video. So I'll probably go inside, eat something, come outside, put the brakes on, brake rotors, pads. Yada be booty ba, and uh, yeah, pretty much go from there. So it's not too bad. The hardest part is is now that I know that I need to flare that, I can weld it, flare it. Doesn't look too bad. All painted and everything. So I welded the top side there, and then I welded the bottom side. This way, it'll have rigidity. And it doesn't need that much. Oh my gosh, my legs. So anyway, that's it for that. Um, that should give me a lot, a lot more clearance. Right here, it does, uh, this right here does hit that. Um, but it hits that, and it also hits the sway bar bracket. So those are my man-made bump stops. Anyway, I'm going to get to the other side. I'm going to get it, weld it, do the same stupid crap, make a mess, and, uh, yeah. I'll be back tomorrow's video. You guys can watch me do the breaks. Because you don't want to watch me do all this. It's a nightmare. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Comment below. Let me know if you want me to show you something, tell you something, do something tool review you guys let me know thanks for subscribing comment do what you guys keep on doing all right guys later